Hi guys, this is Runchex from Bluff the Spot. Today I'm going to attempt to play um, some Zoom 500. Haven't played it in a while. Thought I might as well record a video for you guys. Um, you know, currently waiting for a game to start. There is one table, I'm on a waiting list, so this video might be interrupted, but um, let's see, maybe we manage like half an hour or so. The idea is gonna play without the HUD. The zoom pool is pretty small at the moment. There's only about eight people in the pool, uh, which is ridiculous, but um, we'll see what happens. I'm gonna play pretty basic strategy, very standard, so that, you know, the premise is to find out if we can um, do well in a game without having any reads on the opponents as well as, you know, without being too creative. It's a pretty decent hand uh, to start with. All right, definitely going to three, but there's no reason to try to slow play or, you know, it's just a standard three, but now on this board, I think I just like uh, pot size bet as a sizing with the specific hand. We do block the nine, which is not ideal, you know. With the nine, potentially I could have could have went could have gone for um, smaller sizing, but oh well. I suppose it's okay. Yeah, the fact that there's not many players in the pool actually kind of is bad for us because apparently we're gonna be ha we're gonna have to wait um, for a hand to be dealt occasionally, which kind of sucks because this is supposed to be zoom. Hopefully the field picks up. Currently there's no other interesting games running. Uh, there's one table of 5100. Uh, I'm hoping to get on it, but we'll see if that happens. I played that game earlier. It broke, um, and I missed. I missed the recreational player coming back um, to the game later on, so I didn't get the seat, unfortunately. Um, well, one thing I want to note, um, it seems like everybody in the pool is playing full stack or 100 big blinds rather. Um, and, you know, I suppose that's unusual for the zoom pool. You would see a lot of short stackers, um, especially in these stakes, I would, I would think so. Anyway, we, we're just going to call. No reason to do anything else. Not the best board. I suppose we can safely just give up with our hand. Uh, we don't really see any turn cards that could potentially allow us to do something, something tricky with this hand. So all right. Well, what am I gonna do here? All right, came to us. No reason to lead. All right, this guy is taking his time. Hmm. 
Yeah. I'm gonna bluff the river if he checks back. He does check back. I'm gonna go for a bluff here. Um, betting large, you know, it's unlikely that he has two pair. Clearly, because we blocked the nine. Uh, if he did have a flush draw, well, so be it. But we're trying to fold like a queen, queen or better, basically. Queen or or some sort of high pair. Um, now it's tempting to. 3-bet here. I think that's what I'm going to do. Not always 3-betting with this specific hand, but, uh, you know. Although, I mean, I kind of did it mostly because this, this player was unmarked, so he's an unknown for me, but uh, like I said, I haven't been playing... Zoom 500 lately. Um, all right, let me think what I want to do. I want to go for a check call and see how he's going to be playing. Oh, he didn't bite. Interesting river. Hmm. I don't buy it. Well, he did have it. Pretty much the only type of hand that makes sense, but, you know, Jack-7 shouldn't be that much in his range. Once he calls our preflop... But... You know, because of course, a lot of connected jack acts are going to be 3-betting, and um, the fact that he didn't just didn't think he would have that specific hand very often. Oh, he shouldn't, really. Hmm. The zoom pool is dying a bit again. Only seven people right now. Theoretically, I could have played two tables uh, for the recording, considering that the zoom pool is so small. That would have speed things up a bit. Unfortunately, I didn't think about it, and now it's a bit too late to set it up. So I'm just going to leave it as is. I wanted to record a video for you guys where I'm playing the higher stakes in the zoom pools. For quite some time, I thought I'm gonna roll it out around Christmas time, but um, today there was just not not much action elsewhere, so why not try it today? You know, because obviously. A lot of people in uh, in my streams, um, a lot of viewers, right, and um, even some of our students are asking the question of um, how are the higher stakes different to the lower stakes, um, and what are the jumps, right? And um, okay, now let's play a hand, and I'm gonna 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 get back to the discussion. So basically. Raising is fine and calling should be okay as well. I think I would like to raise here considering we, we're we going to be exactly like this type of card. Uh, you know, it would be pretty difficult to get action 
if he doesn't hit, well, he did hit in this case, and we were in great, great, great shape um, on the flop. And boom. All right, that was lucky. That was lucky. Just looking at his hand in the replayer. Actually, he had an inside draw, so we weren't even that great of a shape. I mean, we were probably flipping or thereabouts. So that hand worked out. Very lucky for us, good run out, um, etc. So now uh, we're really deep with him. I want to start building the pot against a random ace X. Right, so coming back to what I started talking about, uh, which is the difference in the stakes. Um, I think there is a big jump um, in the skill level when it comes from, let's say, PLO 50 to PLO 100. There's a significant jump. There are some decent regulars already in those stakes. Mm, the next big jump is probably from 200 to 500. Right. I think, well, I'm not sure about that, but I, I would assume that, you know, the 100 PLO and 200 PLO are kind of close. 200 probably attracts more um, good regulars, whereas in 100 you wouldn't see too many of those. There's still some, but all right. I was contemplating checking behind, but I just want to start building the pot here. Anyway, so yeah, the jump from 200 to, uh, to 500 um, is pretty steep, um, you know, because the pool is pretty reg heavy and even you see sometimes people from high stakes jump into these, these pools once in a while. And by the way, the pool has grown. We, we have 25 players at the moment, and, and it looks really decent from what I see um, in the lobby. All right, so he limped pre-flop. Um, mm -hmm. Interesting. I think I want to bluff here. And... Now we backed into the card we were hoping to get, so let's keep betting. If we get raised, that's a tricky spot. He can have Jack-10. Um, there's no reason why he wouldn't be able to have it with the line that he took. Um, and I assume he's a weaker player. I wouldn't call if he... If he were to raise, I, I just don't think he would come up with um, with such a play because he would essentially need to bluff some made hand uh, in that situation. Um, in fact, he called me with kings, so he had a set. All right, interesting situation. We are really deep with all of them. Um, obviously. I'm not gonna, well, basically there's just one play, you know, I, I'm not gonna do anything else. It would be not smart. Now, should we lead is the question. No, I believe the answer to that is yes. Don't want him to check behind um, with aces. I want to put him in a tough spot. And also, you know, if he has a jack, he's liable to check back. Don't want that. I'm basically putting him in a tough spot with all of his range. Um, you know, and I'm going to have a lot of draws to do it with. Now, this nine, of course... 
is making things a bit tricky. Um, let's make a 151 as a bat. No particular reason, just sounded about right. We are blocking the straights, of course, and he shouldn't have too many of those. Um, and now the six pairs, you know, we're just gonna keep, keep betting. Uh, I do believe we have the best hand a lot of the time. You know, we would be bluffing on this runout um, quite a lot, quite often. So the line makes sense. Mm. So that's that's the kind of situation I, I was talking about. Ah, yeah, I didn't wanna I didn't wanna lose the table. I wanted to point out that we have some strong players um, in the pool right now. You know, there's K Junior who who is definitely playing uh, the highest stakes. Um, you know, there's another guy. I was also playing pretty high, so right now, like K Junior, right now you see he is here. I suppose for the same type of reason as I, um, which is we're waiting for that uh, PLO 10K game. He's also on the waiting list. He's behind me in the waiting list, so you know we're both just waiting. All right, so 26 people in the in the Zoom pool, so we're playing six max finally. And we see some shorties already. Well, this guy is not really short. That's 80 big blinds, but um, here's a 50 big blind one. It's something to look out for, you know, because they can make your life difficult. Um, all right, interesting. We're 150 big blinds deep. Board pretty good for us. Not too bad for him as well. I think we go with a small bat. I don't expect him to be able to um, bluff somehow, and I want to start building, or I want to start charging some sort of draws, um, which he can definitely have. Considering that you know he called on a small blind, very often it's going to be some sort of rundown uh, that could potentially, you know, do could potentially could pay us off uh, on that on that board. All right, so we have a chance to play a three-way pot. Uh, the shorty is the one that makes our life difficult. You know, if we if we knew that he is mm, squeezing with a high frequency, we're in a tough spot actually here. All right, but since we don't know that, uh, we just uh, we just call as we should. Now, Thony is seabedding on a board where he shouldn't be seabedding with a very high frequency, um, and the player in position calls. At this stage, you know we still can have the best hand, but we have the worst position. It's going to be pretty hard to show it down. So let's see, let's see it play out. Um, oh, actually, let's just play. Let's just play. I'm gonna look it up in the replayer later, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you what was up in there if if we see the showdown. All right. Um, I want to use my three as a, as a reason to to bluff. All 
So my hand doesn't have much potential for the turn, never mind about the river. So basically, if I'm checking back, I'm pretty much giving up. Um, well, he did find a check raise there, which is intriguing because we do have a three, so we do block um, some of the strays that he could have had. But um, yeah, interesting. Now I do realize that you know usually I would be playing um, on stream if I'm recording a, a video for an audience, so it would be on stream. So these silences which I'm having right now, they they would be usually filled with me trying to answer some of the questions that my my viewers would have. I like that format uh, a lot. You know, it's it's nice to interact. Uh, with the audience and we're getting some interest. Oh, and I timed out, didn't even realize it, the action was on me. So anyway, um, you know, it's interesting to to have that interactive um, element. Um, but lately, uh, I've been just doing a weekly show on Twitch where I would have a guest and it's pretty much an interview. We would be discussing um, a lot of topics, all poker related. And since that's what I'm doing on Twitch at the moment, so I, I figured, you know what, I'm gonna I'm gonna record the video for a YouTube audience, and, uh, give you guys something to to see, because I know that the video that I made where I'm playing the um, I suppose it was uh, PLO 100. Um, that is the most popular video that I've made so far. So I thought maybe that's what you guys want to see. Obviously, in this session so far, nothing noteworthy has really happened. I mean, we we got lucky and won one spot, and um, that pretty much defined the session so far. I mean, we didn't play that many hands yet, so um, all right. Just checking the time there. I'm planning to do about a 45-minute recording. I do hope that we gonna have an interesting hand here somewhere along the way. Um, but you know what? An important thing to realize is that it's not always about you know these interesting hands it's not always about uh, the big pots and whatnot you know if you play a solid basic strategy you don't put yourself in too many difficult situations you don't make your life too difficult um, and you still win what's there not to like Mm. Yeah, contemplating a lead. I think I'm gonna pass on that. We have three spades that slightly reduces my my backdoor <clears throat> potential. Uh, could have check raised there as well, but um, you know the premise of this video. We're gonna play. We're gonna play play pretty basic. And we're going to explore if that type of strategy is good enough for winning at these stakes. Because we do know that it's definitely good enough for winning at the, at the higher stakes. Uh, sorry, at the lower stakes. Not at the higher stakes, definitely not at the... Don't try it, no. But, um, you know, at the lower stakes, yeah, if we just play basic, solid, it's not that difficult. It's a lot of work, but once you do the work, it's not that difficult. You know, and I speak from experience with my students. I see, you know, 
a lot of improvement in the win rates just from fixing some basic um, things, which a lot of people neglect. Hmm. I'm tempted to... He's a bit too short for this type of move. But uh, yeah, I think he's a bit too short. If he was 100 big blinds deep, um, I have marked him as a weaker player at some point. So if he has was 100 big blinds deep, I would have preferred to play that previous hand, but um, a bit too short for that. Now this player has been pretty active as well. Um, I wouldn't mind marking him as a weaker player at this stage, but um, I tend not to rush with my, um, you know, with with marking players, as it's too easy to make an incorrect assumption about a player and then you might not reevaluate your assumption anymore at the later stage. Now, interesting, we do have um, a card to bluff this board. Um, obviously, a lot of straights came in. A lot of straights came in. Still, I'm not buying it. All right. Interesting. Yeah, you see, that's the thing with the weaker players. Uh, you wouldn't expect um, a rag making this sort of uh, half pot size C bet or bet rather on the river with um, what basically is the lowest or, you know, one of the lowest straights possible. So, of course, you know, I should theoretically make a note about this on him. And if I know this about him, then, well, that probably makes my call not so great. Um, and probably would have made my, you know, raise there more profitable with my ace high blocker. Not flush draw blocker, blocker that is. All right, so this guy is super short, um, mm -hmm. and this guy does open. So, of course, we can um, just call, try for him to to raise and then re-raise again, but, you know, we don't even have a monster, so potentially that's not even a great idea. Um, can check on this type of board with the, with the high frequency. I would like to bet um, with a small sizing here. Let's make it. Um, let's make it 30, and we take it down. Now, of course, I would have liked to see him call with the queen. You know, with a flush draw, hence the tiny bet. Right, well, a rainbow hand that I'm not gonna defend there. Mm -hmm. Everybody's deep, we can definitely open this hand. Especially it's on the cutoff. Um, I don't know why we're four-handed again. The zoom pool is still pretty pretty big. Um, all right, so I'm going to see bet. Don't expect him to check raise a lot. If he does, we actually don't mind. Um, and of course, we're hoping to get called by a queen, by a weaker flush draw, by a pair, plus some sort of gutter. Although that might have... Uh, Went for a check raise. All right, well, he was all in basically. Great board. Yep. Running good. All 
Okay, indeed running good. Uh, so we have top set and a gutter. We don't have any backdoor flush draws, which is actually quite all right because that allows, well, that means he might have uh, some of them. Uh, now he made a tiny bet, I think. I think raising is interesting. Calling is okay as well. I, I think I want to raise. We do block the nuts, you know, and potentially if he has sevens or eights, we maximize. We maximize uh, how much money we make uh, by making this raise. Well, obviously now if he has sevens, well then uh, that really sucks. It's not scaring us though. We're still gonna bet now. Potentially, he might decide to even bluff it off somehow against this, considering that um, you know we raised on the flop. And all right, so let's make a fifty-one point something bet. Because we shouldn't love this runout, we should, we theoretically have a lot of straights. So, you know, that opens a possibility for him to bluff us. And that's what I'm hoping he's gonna do. Well, he didn't. Let's see what he had. I'm not gonna pull it up for you, but he actually had a straight with the, with the nuts, not straight, um, Jack nine. So again, we're running really good. Something to note there, of course, um, would be that he led the nuts on that board, and I like that play um, from him. Yeah, I think I want to raise, punish the limper. Of course, this is a strong player here. Um, he has, I believe, a significant limping range. Um, could even pot it. I think putting it is, is interesting. Now, Jack Tan obviously got there. If he's leading, would we be... Um, would we be calling? Now, I'm sort of torn between my options. I do want to value bet here, but um, at the same time, I want to see what he has. And um, yeah, he might have called. He might have called if we value bet. I kind of chickened out there. Well, not really chickened out, but just didn't do what I believe was the best play. Kind of a thin value bet, of course, but... Um, all right, interesting. So we are deep, but I do just want to bomb it here. It's pretty hard for him to play against us. I don't see any reason to slow play um, necessarily there because, you know, if he doesn't have an ace, um, he's very unlikely to put money in the pot if he doesn't improve. Of course, if he had flush draw, um, I think he's still calling with some frequency against my pot size bet. Um, in which case we love it because we have the nut flush draw. We had the nut flush draw there. And um, so another lead. So yeah, I, I don't think there's a reason to the slow play, to put it simply. That specific hand. I mean, we're not, by any means, we're not betting all of our um, A sacks with the pair. 
Definitely not, but that specific one, I think, uh, you know, the best way to make money with it or to maximize your expected um, value with that hand is by just, uh, you know, going for a big bet on on the flop. All right, we have a straight. I do want to value bet this one. There are a lot of draws that can call us. There's also a top pair which can call us. Now on a queen, I think I'm gonna check back and I'm calling rivers. Uh, not because the queen scared me in any way, it's because I thought that he might be bluffing occasionally on the river with his missed clubs. Once he didn't bluff i assume he has a king let's let's check it out he had a king he had a king and clubs he had two pair in fact he had ace jack king eight with two clubs uh so it's interesting that he didn't check raise the flop and um, it, it's totally fine you know it's not that he should have but it's just something to note, you know, a lot of people would just have their two pair and a gutter and a, uh, and a flush row and they would just try to get all the money in considering that he wasn't even a hundred big blinds deep. But, um, you know, the fact that he didn't opt for that play, well, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's noteworthy at least. Mm -hmm. Definitely not a board that suits us too much because obviously we're opening under the gun. We're kind of missing it. We do have a six that we could potentially use here, but um, you know, against two good players, I don't think we should become too creative here. You know, we have other hands to bluff with um just you know try to show out show down our tens they're good occasionally very rarely but uh yeah but otherwise you know our tens didn't even really have um like we, we wouldn't love to hit um a 10 on that turn for example because a 10 would complete a straight and um, all of a sudden, you know, we have, have the top set, but we are not absolutely happy about it. So, so it's been close to 40 minutes um, so far. There is no movement at the table that I'm waiting for. Um, so I don't think I'm actually just going to sign off for dinner soon. I'll make this video about a 45 minute. Uh, and I would be very curious uh, about what you guys think. Let me know in the comment section below. Um, right. Now, the river is an interesting decision. I'm, I'm definitely not betting here, but... Um, Okay, he he had. Actually, you know what? Next time I also will set up one thing for these recordings. I'm going to, um, you know, set up a way where I can pull up the um, replayer for you guys to see, because then we can discuss uh, the hands that, that we saw. So wait a minute. Oh. I thought I'm going to time, uh, time out. Um, how many big blinds is that? I don't even know. But anyway, let's call. Let's call the 20 big blind guy. All right, we got a, got a gutter. Not the most amazing. Nothing else to go with the hand. I mean, I'm, it's good enough to call once, but uh, we're pretty much done now with the hand. Yeah. So yeah, do let me know in the comment section uh, about, um, how, first of all, how do you like the format? Uh, do you like to see me play, um, you know, in real time? Is that 
a sort of thing you would be interested to see more of. Uh, and maybe you have some sort of um, recommendations as to how to make it more interesting for you. Should I you know, just play uh, normally or should I uh, make pauses whenever we encounter an interesting hand and, uh, you know, perhaps I could discuss it in more detail. Now, two things I could do here, obviously. Um, I think checking works out best. Right, on that nine, I actually don't think I'm able to value bet anyway. So I'm just going to check it back. We win a lot of the time. Perhaps I could have value bet. I actually... I'm not sure. Not sure. Could have value bet. The nine... Yeah, actually, I should have value bet. The nine pairing, you know, doesn't allow him to go out of his, out of his way uh, with bluffing. Um because he doesn't really represent the um, full house very well, but we could definitely have a full house. You know, checking back aces or, or something along those lines is not out of the question there. All right, so we got a gutter, backdoor flush draw, and the nut flush draw. Against the pot size bet, I just want to call. I don't really want to, you know, try to put all the money in. Uh, we're never way ahead you know we're doing definitely fine but we're never way 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 ahead now we backed into two pair oh i think it's good enough to just check down right and yeah obviously he had an absolute monster he had the nut straight with the higher straight redraw and the second nut flush draw so you know us not raising there um, actually was very very good and um, that's something i see a lot of people actually make a mistake with uh, of just you know you have a hand that can definitely get it in and you would just opt for that option but um, realistically that option is not that great because you're not really crushing the range uh, that opponent would get it in with um, and very often like in that case i probably had like um, let me pull up the replayer i probably had about like yeah 35 40 percent equity So in fact, you know, getting it all in would actually be pretty bad in a small pot to just stack off for for a full stack with, uh, you know, about 40% equity. It's, uh, it's not a winning strategy, that's for sure. Okay, interesting. So... Now my hand could potentially call against the bet on the river. Um, we didn't have to face that decision. In fact, he showed down ace-queen, which is obviously the way to play ace-queen in that spot. There's no reason to try to bluff me off ace-king, ace really, you know. So everybody is deep. Um, noticeable is that, you know, or noteworthy rather, is that we don't have uh, the ace high suit, uh, and in which case I, I want to just fold this hand. Uh, you know, with the ace high suit, I would have I would have opened that hand. That's just something to note for you guys. All right, so he is kind of limping a lot, I, I suppose, because so far we've seen him do it, uh, well, at least twice. Um, right, well, I'm tempted to 
I think I'm going to check back. It just works out better. Uh, on an ace, we can still very comfortably bluff here. And we get to fold, get him to fold, you know, like a pair between sevens and jacks more frequently when the ace comes. Yeah. So you see on the flop, I don't think he would be folding his nines if we would have, if we were to bet. Um, so us checking there didn't really change my, anything. Well, apart from the fact that we lost only one bet instead of two. So that's great news. Um, gonna value bet. Plenty of draws out there. Obviously now a lot of them hit. So now is the time to slow down. And this is a card where we definitely slowed down. There is no reason to try to bluff him off of anything. He wouldn't be calling those kings, I don't think. So yeah, it worked out fine. And as you see, basically in most of the hands, we just took the simple route. You know, weren't trying to be too creative, weren't trying to make our life difficult. Just playing simple poker kind of worked out. I mean, the results, we won like 1,200, I suppose, or 1,300. The results don't really reflect uh, anything, you know, because the sample size, of course, is so small that, you know, we, we shouldn't even care about how we did uh, results-wise. Um, what I usually try to do after a session is I analyze whether I'm happy with the way I played, whether I made uh, good decisions, whether I quit when I'm supposed to quit, you know, and a lot of other things. So basically, you know, I'm process oriented when it comes to evaluating uh, my session. The results really don't matter that much. You know, of course, we're we're all playing to win some money, but um, if you're only focused on the results, or in fact, if results are, uh, you know, of significant importance for you, then you're just setting yourself up for a lot of stress, and that's just not healthy. All right, we're on the big blind right now. I'm gonna um, sit on the next big blind. Uh, we have two pair, but obviously very, you know, not a strong hand. I'm just gonna call. Uh, on the king, I do expect him to continue uh, betting with a lot of hands that are just bluffing here on the flop. We do block the nine, which I'm not entirely happy about because, you know, that reduces some of the 10-9 type of hands that he could have. Um, all right, so now we'll see what happens. The Queen Tan obviously got there. Um, does he have Queen Tan very often? I was about to say no. Hmm. That is very interesting. I mean, It's hard to understand uh, why would he choose this bet size on this river. Mm. Very tempted to call, but in fact, I'm just going to fold. I think calling against his line would have been fine. But very often, you know, because he is a weaker player in the game, and very often I see um, people just make a pot size bet on the river when they got there, um, trying to just maximize the value without giving it much thought. Um, so that kind of swayed me towards folding and folding. And of course, we're not, you know, we're not blocking any any straights. 
there and um, you know so basically we didn't even have that strong of a hand all right do I want a value bet here I think I do and I'm gonna value bet with a bigger sizing here um, he definitely can call with the weaker ace he's unlikely to have a straight uh, at this stage all right well listen thanks for tuning in um, as I said please do uh, let me know in the comments what you think uh, if you have any recommendations etc etc if you liked this video uh, remember to click the like and subscribe um, and I, I'll see you all next time bye